Hi, welcome to this week's session of uh, the Swedish Startup Sessions. I'm Annika Lidne and I'm here with Johan Ronne Stam and we're going to talk about apps uh, and the Apple App Store and Johan's new startup, Jido. So, stay tuned. This is Sweden, you ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is the Swedish Startup Sessions. Hello, welcome back to the Swedish Startup Sessions, and I'm here with Johan Ronnestam. Hello. Hello. Um, you're one of, I would say, the stars of the Swedish internet scene. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> you say. Yeah, yeah, I say. Um, and uh, you've been a snowboard pro. Yes. You have been a creative director for one of the most prominent Swedish digital agencies. Yes. Yes. And founder. And founder. Um, and you've been, a, I would say, online or social and social media guru for the past what, five, six, seven years, something, Some, something like that. Something yes. like yeah. that. And now you suddenly switched and, and gone into the startup track. Yes, uh, you could say so. Yes, I, I mean I've uh, always wanted to um, build my own business uh, and, and build something that doesn't involve necessarily consulting. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, the reason behind it, of course. So tell, tell, tell me a little more about yourself apart from these things I've said yeah, about your I mean, background. Yeah, I mean, I, I, as you said, I have a background uh, as a snowboarding professional and, uh, and um, it's, I have a pretty different background because I was snowboarding after uh, or during high school, so I missed most of it. Uh, I spent it snowboarding around the world and, uh, and so on. And then I broke a foot uh, and uh, when I broke that foot, I actually got uh, like 10 percent handicapped uh, uh -huh. but uh, in in sweden we have pretty good insurance uh, on the lift card so for the cash i i received from the insurance company i, I went into the store and then i a computer store and i bought myself uh, the most so like the fastest computer there was a big scanner and then an original uh, copy of um, photoshop and i and i imagined myself starting working with design mm -hmm. uh, at the time uh, this was around 93, 94, uh, and then I heard about this internet, so, yeah. so I bought a modem uh, to, uh, what was it, um, CompuServe, and then I started thinking about maybe I should design websites. So that's how I sort of got into uh, the internet scene, but while I was doing that I was also working with marketing, I stopped snowboarding, I ended up in the retail industry where I worked as a marketing manager for uh, golf brands, and then I switched to the financial industry where I worked with marketing and innovation within uh, actually the stock market so I delivered the first technical analysis systems for uh, E-Trade when they Ooh. launched online <laughs> and so I started working with digital interfaces uh, and then I switched to FramFab and Jonas Bigersson yeah. pretty early uh, so that gave me sort of a kickstart into uh, meeting uh, when I was, what was I, 27 or 26, 27 years yeah. old and then I found myself standing in front of the board on Vattenfall, one of Sweden's absolutely largest brands. And I, I, I wouldn't say I, I was supposed to be there, but uh, you, know, you remember the yeah. time. So, so I, I, that gave me a, a possibility to really start working with big brands early. And I, in 98, I took part of in um, pitching FanFab to Nike. And we then, mm -hmm. as a result of that, did the first NikeFootball.com in the world. Yeah. And then I worked with Nike. And then I switched into another company. I worked with Adidas for two years, and then I started my own company mm -hmm. where we had Adidas still as a customer for another seven years. And, and then I got into so like what <laughs> I do today. So I have a very different background. But one of the strengths with it is that I've been I'm not gone from the school straight into one industry. Yeah. I've been going through many different industries. So I have a pretty good eye of understanding how when you do, for example, communication, which I work with pretty much how that really uh, ends up being used by uh, a store manager or something like that, or the consumer and so on. And then I, one of my other challenges to communicate to people what I do is that 
people ask me, what do you do? And as, as you know, I speak quite a lot about communication and business trends and so on in Sweden. But I also work as a hands-on designer, so mm. I, I do big branding projects for international brands where I go in and I think about how they could innovate their uh, business in different ways. And there I sometimes do design and so on, or I work with strategies. So I do many different things. Mm. So, and that's the reason why I actually started blogging uh, many years ago, that I wanted people to read about what I did rather than me telling them what yeah, I did, because yeah. I found that uh, it's much better to be transparent about mm. what you do, and then people can make up their own ideas. So uh, I think I, I was probably one of the first, but already five years ago when I started presentations, I always said, my name is Google, keyword you want to understand. And yeah. that's, that's my corporate presentation, yeah. because I, I think it's better for people to find out. So a very, uh, <laughs> so like a large background, background and I, I still do a lot of different things. Yeah. Yeah. And now you have a startup yes. uh, in kids gaming. Exactly. Uh, together with um, about two and a half years ago, me and, uh, or actually I contact, contacted one of the uh, best uh, system architects or engineers, whatever you would say, that I know of. And I told them, like, uh, we had been sketching on different app ideas for a long time. And I basically said to him that, you know, we really have to get into this business now. And I, we had been trying to build things on the side, but I said, like, I think it's time to, to really do this for real. Uh, so my idea was really to, to launch uh, an app company, uh, but since I really wanted to do something that contributed to the world in a better way, I, I asked if he was interested to, to build games with some sort of learning aspect mm -hmm. in them. So, so Yaido, as the company is called, which is named af after uh, our names, which is uh, Jonas, and then it's um, Andreas, and then it's Johan doing things. Uh -huh. so like, like Johan, <laughs> okay. Andreas, Jonas do. Uh, so, and then we found out, luckily, that Jaido was totally free in the world. So, so we named it Jaido, and in that company, we basically, since about one and a half years back, we're building on uh, creating different things that, that makes life better for kids around the world. Yeah. That's our ambition, at least. And what, what would you say, I mean, I mean the, the, the app market, especially kids' games are really, I mean, it's, it's so many games, it's so yeah. overloaded. And what is disruptive with uh, Gaido yeah. games? Yeah, I mean, w I, I, exactly. Uh, so far, it's not, nothing disruptive what we've launched with yet. I, I would say that our ambition is to launch, uh, rather than one game, we're launching a long-term ecosystem mm. of games uh, and so far uh, we're a little bit behind schedule in terms of that we spent the first four or five months on a very complex game mm -hmm. that we stopped because we couldn't really see how we could finalize it mm. or when we were supposed to finalize it. Uh, but the idea is really to we're now building we have built we have launched three apps we're launching a new app uh, with the ABC focus within the next three or four weeks after that, we're actually launching in, in uh, September, October, we're launching a social network for parents with younger kids uh, to do different things in a new way mm -hmm. that I don't want to tell you about. <laughs> but, 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 but we found the way that we think we can connect parents and kids in, in a special way. And then after that, we're launching more complex games. So basically what we're doing is building a platform so we can have control of launching our own apps in the future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, uh, and that, I wouldn't say it's disruptive, but if we manage to do what we want, we still have control of launching things. Yeah, instead what, of drowning in, yeah, the in drowning in it and also, you know, relying on Apple picking yeah. us up and also uh, the other problems. Uh, with that said, I think when, we, when, when I identified the possibility to do this, um, we really saw that it, it's a gap in time right now, because if you look at Electronic Art or Activision, yeah. and those guys, they're building fantastic games, but not for young kids. No. Uh, and for young kids, you don't really need super advanced 3D, mm. you don't need 40 people on the developer team. So we really saw it as there's this gap in time now and maybe two, three years yeah. more where we can actually sit with three people, we can launch global games that has the quality that is enough for kids. Mm. Uh, then I think we will have a challenge that after that, if we haven't managed to get our company up and running, we will be challenged by companies and like And also the, the traditional talk. game companies are actually backing when it comes to revenue and, and reach and so on yeah. and I think it's because their games are so complex today and take so much time exactly it, it, they, they have very complex games it takes a lot of time and another thing is also a lot of the tra traditional game makers whatever whoever they are 
are built on uh, on a price model uh, that works because they could, you know, charge 450 Swedish crowns mm -hmm. or, or uh, 45 euros for a game, then you could pay the rights to the yeah. illustrator that was high. And now they more or less has, what do you say, it's almost as they have destroyed their own market because they have earned so much money on paying pay people less. Yeah. Uh, but now when they need to pay them even less, even, yeah. even smaller amounts of money, they run into big problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you have sold a game for 45 euros and now you want to tell that illustrate, like, sorry, but we can only sell it for uh, 99 cents. Yeah. So therefore you're only getting this much <laughs> because we still want to make money. Yeah. That's a problem. So I think uh, the fact that we have our own illustrator and designer and, and mm -hmm. our own technical guys uh, makes it possible. With that said, it's still, uh, what, what, what I've learned so far is that I've been a little bit depressed about the fact that it seems that not many parents in the world really spend time in really looking for good games. Mm. Uh, they basically take the top list. Yeah. I mean, we've been on the top list except for the States, so that's of course would have been better. But if you look at the education top list, mm. we've been number one in countries like Russia, in Germany, in France, in Spain, in Italy, mm. all of Latin America. And if we would have been the first rated educational toy in a traditional toy store, yeah. I would have been very rich. Yeah. Right yeah. now, we, we're not even making money on that, so it's yeah. a long-term project. Mm. So how do you say, we have uh, uh, another Swedish company in the same space, yes. Poka Boka, which is uh, backed by a huge <coughs> Swedish media house. Absolutely. Uh, and and uh, I wouldn't say you are doing similar things, but but they are similar in the, in the ways of quality, yeah. uh, in the way... way uh, the general approach, I would say, and, and the, the desire to big, build brands. So you see that as a competition, or uh, it's a different. Personally, I, I never see things as competition. Mm -hmm. I always see things as, as I'm not being good enough. <laughs> 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 I always got that question when I ran an advertising agency, and people ask me, "Who are your competitors?" I don't have any. They're like, "But you have competitors." No, but sometimes we do bad work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now I would say Tokabok and us are very equal in, in many ways, uh, apart from the fact that they're back with money. And, and uh, of course, if we could have, I mean, we're we have, we're paying for all this ourselves, and, and that, and we don't have super enough, not not enough money to really hire ten people more. Uh, that has of course given us uh, some. Um, uh, in, in that sense, Tokabok is moving faster. Yeah. And I would say that we already from the beginning the sticker books that we have launched. A lot of people have looked at it, ah, cool concept, and, but for us it's a research platform. Yeah. We, we launched something that we found we could launch pretty fast and then we could learn about how the marketing works. And mm -hmm. so, so we're spending small amounts of money rather, maybe we're spending, you know, like $500 in two hours mm -hmm. and then just looking how that works so we can learn for the day when we're going to launch something with $5,000 yeah. per day. Uh, so, so, so in that sense, I would say we are very equal, us and Tokaboka, but they are backed by big money. Uh, that, of course, leads to the fact that they constantly have to... to uh, Produce uh, a lot. Pr yeah, they have produced a lot and they have to succeed and they have yeah. to work fast. I know uh, Björn Jekko is one of the, well, is the CEO, I think, still. He has moved now to San Francisco yeah. in order to, to move it even faster. Uh, our ambition is never has never been to move to San Francisco. Mm. We hope to run this globally. A non-visible difference between us and Tokaboka that that hasn't paid off that much yet is, and most Swedes don't even understand it, is that if you switch your phone to Chinese, all our apps are made in Chinese. If oh. you switch it to Italian, it, they're all in, in Italian. We have a new app coming with voices. We have voices in 18 languages. Yeah. So we always globalize our apps. Mm -hmm. We think that's something that will benefit, benefit us a lot, a lot if we would be a brand like Tokaboka. So yeah. if we would have a hit one of the games coming up now could potentially be a bigger hit. That would then lead to people finding out about us. And then I think we have a bigger strength when they actually see in China, wow, this is in Chinese. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it gives the feeling yeah, that it's it, a yeah, Chinese yeah, app. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's a local app. And yeah. since it's four kids, uh, I mean, my kids are, are five and seven. And, and the seven-year-old, of course, understands something, but none of them speaks English. No. Uh, so they have much more fun with something that speaks their language. Mm. Do you think that is a... As a benefit for non-US companies that we actually live in a world uh, where English isn't the dominant language and, and we have, have more care about uh, delivering on local languages. 
Yeah, I, of course, I think it's uh, something that a lot of uh, companies will do once they see that it's uh, uh, something they will earn money from. Uh, yeah. uh, my nine years with Adidas was part of, one of the things I did was I often launched global campaigns in up to 30 languages. Mm -hmm. So I, I and the, one of the illustrators we had hired or designers who, who was working for me at the time was Jonas, who is now a partner yeah, in Yaido. Yeah. So we know how to design something that looks very beautiful in both Chinese, German and French. That's and, a and skill. Yeah, exactly. And so, so, so we can design things initially to have them translated. Mm -hmm. Most companies that does not have that knowledge, they, they will run into big costs because mm -hmm. you have to redesign all the graphics. You have yeah. to, so therefore they don't not, not do it. So I think if we can just, uh, you know, get ourselves on top of the list in more countries than a few, uh, I think we'll have money from them. In the short run, the, the US market is st still so dominant that yeah. I've heard figures like 88% 8, 8 of all paid apps yeah. are paid for in the States. Uh, and we have about eight or 80, 88. 88. Ooh. Yeah, that's the latest figure I've yeah. heard. And I don't know if it's, it's probably not like that for Angry Birds who top mm. the top 10 lists yeah. in the world. But I, th I think for the apps below, yeah. it probably is like that. I mean, you can be, there are countries, in, like for example in Finland, that say I get someone to buy five of our, our iPad apps in the education list, yeah. and we get to the top. Yeah with five apps, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is, yeah. it just says something about how immature this yeah. market is. But uh, have, you, have you thought about, um, because you're bootstrapped right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. and have you thought about taking funding, VC funding or angel funding? Yeah, absolutely, and our, uh, we, have, we have two, um, we have three strategies. <laughs> but our first thing is to build this so we become big enough to tell people this is how we want to do it. Yeah. Uh, because I don't want to have money from someone saying, okay, you have to do this in one year, this is what you have to do, and uh, we want this revenue. Uh, which means I would probably look for a little bit different funding. Yeah. Uh, I would rather look to have a big toy brand fund us mm. than have a big VC fund us. Yeah. Because I would, uh, which one I don't know, but in Sweden, yes, because I recognize some brands. But let's say B, who is owned by Presolv, I think, yeah. which is a big VC company, I would say, it's more interesting for us to, to, to become a part of a toy brand yeah. than as, as Tokaboka, for example, that yeah. is part of a media brand. Yeah. I, I mean, to me, it's more relevant to, to get access to much more characters and so on. But they, of course, have that through, through mm. books. But, uh, and not just get money. Yeah, basically. exactly. But then we have this other thing with the social network, as I told you about. We, we think it has a huge potential. We have the, we have the qualities in terms of... of who we are in the company to build something really great. Mm -hmm. We could end up having that being seeded through the world pretty fast. Then we would need money fast to, to fund the servers. Yeah, and and yeah. I mean, then we'll have to get money in. And then, and then we're looking either to have that in the company or even you know, put it outside. Mm -hmm. uh, but our long-term goal is really to reach the beginning of 2013 when we have launched. Uh, in 2013, we would have launched this new app coming out now. We've launched the social network and we will launch at least five or six more apps. Mm -hmm. Then we have that strength that I'm talking yeah. about. So we can go to someone and say, this is our portfolio. We know exactly what it takes to market something. We know what we need in terms of quality. We know how to organize this the right way. Uh, and then we'll probably get money into the company if none of the apps hit so big so we don't need money. Mm. I would say the dream would, of course, be to be like Angry Birds, yeah. not, not in terms of size, that doesn't matter to me, but in terms of the fact that they can actually steer their company exactly yeah. like they want. Do you think that the, there's a current sort of uh, funding craze where you, if you look at the US, where, where like 19-year-olds just have, oh, have another photo yeah, sharing yeah. app and, and yeah. gets a huge lot of money? It seems like that. I, I've always, I don't know, I don't have the right network for that, even though I have big networks. <laughs> I don't know. I, I remember in the end of 98, 99, where people, some people just got big funds, mm. and it seems like uh, there's that kind of craze again. Uh, but I think it's a matter of personality. I would never go into someone and, and lie about what they will earn from yeah. putting money into my company. So, so the company owned by me, Andreas and Jonas, I, I would say when we want money, I I want to be able to give them realistic numbers, yeah. and that will never appeal to the traditional VC, mm -hmm. I think, because uh, because the numbers will never be so big, mm. unless you s accidentally slip into being Instagram. But still, Instagram doesn't make any money. No, <laughs> so, exactly. So, uh, to me, uh, I'm not interested in those. 
I'm not interested in making money in that sense. Mm. Uh, I'm interested in doing something good. Yeah. Uh, so I would never be the one that goes, you know, if you put in $10,000 here, we'll, or $10 million, we'll make, turn it into $1 billion in one year if we ask and build this, and then <laughs> end up st standing and lying to them. And then one year later, like, sorry, it didn't go like we thought. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's how it, I think a lot of those guys getting all that money, they probably lie their asses off. Or they believe in something so big, but I think we both know that there are a few of those apps. Yeah, I mean, dur during uh, the 90s when yeah. you were working, yeah, or yeah. The, the 90s bubble when you were working at FanFab, yeah. I, I had an agency at the time also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were like, but how can you really, uh, er, I mean, sort of motivate. motivate that valuation when you're working with consultants? Yeah, because yeah, you yeah, had both yeah, FanFab yeah, and the yeah, Icon yeah. Media Lab, and I mean, still, Perhaps people can work 10 hours yeah, yeah, or 12 yeah, hours yeah. a day, but still the, the yeah. valuation were like people who should work 48 hours a day exactly. and be billable all the time. And, yeah, and yeah. we never understood that. And it felt like we can't really go to an investor and say, like, we want the same kind exactly. of money yeah. because we can't deliver that. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a matter of what, what, kind of what, what drives you. And as I said, I'm not driven by I'm driven by doing what I think is fun. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're driven by... I, I, what you think is fun and you, you have some insight into this business, I, th I think it's really hard to uh, to get that money. Even for the as a thing, as this social network we're mm -hmm. building, I think we could probably see ourselves growing big. We have our, some ideas on how to earn money from that and it could be very, very big. Uh, I still would, would not have wanted a big funding for such a company. Mm -hmm. I would wanted a funding that secures the j beginning of the journey. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so, and then if, if you need big money or if you make big money, then of course it's it's different, but it's, uh, and I also think another thing is, uh, not in terms of apps, but an example, Facebook, for example, that now has gone live on the stock market or, or gone public, it's a, it's a very stupid example of, or, or a good example of something very stupid when you put things live that in the digital world relies on social connectivity that is based on people's emotions, yeah. and when they see press writing that Facebook is going down, they will uh, leave. Many percent would think, oh, this is not the place to be. Yeah. And then they will leave. Then would Facebook go down even more? Then even yeah. more people. It's like having a club, and then you read that you know all the stars has left the club. Yeah. No one will go to the nightclub. Mm -hmm. So it's, I don't, I don't know how they thought when they put the social <laughs> network on the public market. I think that, that from what I've understood, this was that they wanted the employees to be able to cash out. Yeah, yeah. And that this was before the Jobs Act in the U.S. Yes. So, so today they wouldn't have put, had to put it on the stock ah, market. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but they were already proceeding to do yeah, that. Yeah. But are you, th are the three of you, uh, the team yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. are you working full time on Yago? No, no what we've done uh, is that uh, none of us has a uh, fortune on the bank. So what we've done is that we've promised ourselves to, to put three days a week mm -hmm. into the building of Jaido and then we have, you know, we can spend two other there are two other days on whatever we want. Yeah. Uh, then of course sometimes someone is doing something on the other days as yeah. well, and, and we have different. I mean, my role is very. I work as as the CEO in one sense, but I'm also the creative director. So I spent a lot of time in the beginning of the concepts, yeah. and, you know, working through how it would look and everything. But then we go into production. And then I feel a little bit bad because both Andreas and Jonas sit there and produce, <laughs> and I go in every now and then check and and then Say I uh, great uh, guys, great guys, or <laughs> not great guys. So we have to change that, or or even as this spring, which was very tough. I, I went in and, and we we produced. We were working on production on, in the production phase through all of February, March, April, and in, in the middle of May. In the end of May, I walked in and said, "We have to stop this." Hmm. And they're like, "Uh huh." I'm like, "If we continue, we don't know." We will go into August, September, October, and still have no apps out, yeah. and and we haven't haven't learned anything about the app market, and we don't even know if this will succeed. So we have to stop this app now, and that was a very tough mm. uh, phase for us. So that's also a role you have to take. But then when we when we get closer to marketing, as we do right now, for example, uh, with this uh, new game, the ABC game we're coming out with, then my role is much more. Uh, so like then I'm back in in, in the game. A lot more instead, and then I'm working much more late hours because then I yeah. have to, you know, have contact with some people in the states and so on. Mm. So, so now I'm going into to launch phase and marketing phase, and that's where I spend much more time. But you have we have different, different uh, roles. yeah, different roles, and also the fact that you know, as you mentioned earlier, I, I have more of a name maybe in this industry, so I have, it's easier for me to get in contact with people that can help my mm. network. And when we need, sometimes when we need an illustrator, I can 
tweet and yeah. suddenly we get the illustrators. Yeah. And so, so it's, it's very important, I think, when you build something, we, we, we share the same, we, we, you know, we are three partners in the company, so we all want what's the best for the company. Yeah. It's important to remember when you have tough production times. Do you think there's a lot of startups that don't kill your darlings like you did with this project, but still sort of don't pivot or, or don't stop project that, yeah. that not really yes. going anywhere? I, I think uh, that's one thing they don't do. Another thing they don't do is constantly try to simplify what you do. Yeah. Uh, I, I see in my role as a speaker and uh, so like the other role I have, I, I have a lot of contact with people that I, I sort of mentor. And a lot of these people build services and they sit for like half an hour explain everything good you can do. And I'm like, fine, but what, what is the one thing you want yeah. people to do? And most people get hang up by trying to improve their product by adding functionality. And I would say everything that we've seen that really works are the things that focus on one thing and, yeah. they, and they just make that better. And that's something we have to remember as well. We, we still in the games, we do take away things and, mm. you know, make those things that are there much better. But, but, but it's a tough time. I, 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 I would have hoped that we killed our darling earlier last yeah, year, but, yeah. but in still we did it. And, and also the way we turned it around through these, through these sticker books that was something. My daughter it, loves yeah, them, yeah, by yeah, the way. <laughs> thank you very much. But, it, but it's a good example. I mean, th there are sticker books out there, and some people that looked at them, like, aren't there sticker books? I'm like, yeah, but we can make them better with better yeah. sounds. And, but also, by, by the, based on the fact that there are sticker books out, it was easy for us to, to oversee the production. Yeah. And that's what we needed at the time mm. when we asked Tyler Project that we could yeah. not oversee the production. Yeah. Because as you know, who's been building a lot of services, when you build something totally new, you don't really know how it's going to end. Even mm. though you think you have an idea, it's in the product, things get bigger. And, yeah. and other things that you thought would work, when you look at it, this doesn't work. Mm. So that's, that's always a challenge. Uh, do you s uh, how do you see the off app market evolve? Because I mean, is there a lot of discussions right now? Will will apps uh, continue to dominate the mm -hmm. way they do, or will we see a, a migration to more HTML5 mm -hmm. um, apps that don't go through the, the app stores? Do you see a, a marketing channel? A I, challenge I, with with sort of leaving the app stores in, yeah. in terms of discovery and so. Yeah. On. No, I, I think in in terms of I don't in a in an over in a, in a period that we can over the next four or five years, yeah. I cannot see that apps that you want to where you want to earn money on the apps. Mm. I don't think we'll go into HTML5 apps mm. and so on because you really want to use everything there is in, in the in the the phone and everything that you can you put in there you can use more advanced graphics by mm. you know having more things preloaded and and, uh, and in the cache memory you can handle things in a totally different way with that said uh, there's other things that you could as well have as an html app or whatever it is uh, so i think it's all you will have to see everything i think the big challenge with the app, mar app market and that's something that apple will have to solve it you can see that they're starting to look at it is the fact that people are becoming mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we have we have pretty good presence with all our apps right now. If I look, we were ranked in what's hot, for example, in 47, in 47 countries, and still we don't see any sales because mm -hmm. we're not in the super top list uh, in those countries. We are in what's hot, but you have to click a bit down on the yeah. staff favorite and then scroll the staff favorite, yeah. and people don't do that in their mobiles. If you go into the iTunes store, it's much easier to find, but we can really see that there's not many people doing yeah. that anymore. Most yeah. people go through the app. So I would say that Apple really has, they have a big challenge if they're not going to lose. It's like us, we've been out here for one and a half year. We have said we will give it to in the beginning of 2013 and then take new decisions on how yeah. to move on. But And we, we believe that we will... Um, we will actually have a positive cash, cash flow. We have a positive ca cash flow now, but that's because we're not taking so much salary. <laughs> but in, in, in the beginning of 2013, we expect to be able to take salaries, all three of us, yeah. and have a positive cash flow still. Uh, but they really have to solve the fact that, that they are, for example, in, in the ranking, I think we rank the third sticky book app in the world yeah. when it comes to sticky book. And fine, I, I understand that that doesn't sell so much, but still. I mean, I know if I talk to 10 parents who have used our app, yeah. the kids love it. Yeah. So we should be able to sell hundreds of thousands mm. of them mm. globally. Yeah. And that's not our problem. That's mm. really 
uh, Apple's problem. Uh, and of course, we can be better at keyword analysis and we understand how to do these things now, that, which we didn't do in the beginning. But with that said, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't want the app market to become what search engine optimization mm. is all about, where people more or less click themselves yeah, positions. Yeah. I, I really think we need shelves and we need shopping areas. So, so like you, if you go into the Swedish retail store NK, yeah. you know where to go to the ladies or, or men's department if you want to buy a gift or if you want to buy perfume, and then you find things. Mm. But you know, my mother, she doesn't find things. I think it's hard too for. I mean, I'm a, yeah. com used yeah. to, very used to computers and, and the app store. But when you want to find yeah. things like top rank yeah. in a certain c yeah. category, for yeah. instance, it's not easy to yeah. find that. Yeah. And then you also have the problem of globalization, which I I spend a lot of time trying to convince or get people to understand. Apart from that, I mean, we sell apps. We're from Sweden. We haven't been brought up on the U.S. top list yet. Yeah. They have contacted us from the States a couple of times, so we've been close, but we've not been there. But we still have to sell our apps for 7 or 15 crowns, uh, 99 cents then, yeah. because we are in the same list as an app coming from the States. Yeah. But that one, they sell in the States. Yeah. So, and then you can say, well, it's a global market, but it doesn't really matter because in the Swedish market, we have Swedish apps. Yeah. Four kids four years old. Yeah. To be honest, Apple should not promote a you know a spelling app on the top list in front of our app if the spelling app is on English. No. Towards four year old kids. No. That that's an obvious thing. Yeah. So I think and I'm not that's the game and I, I'm all right with that, but if as we talked about what's the challenges, I think the big challenge is to because a lot of app people will not uh, they will not afford to continue to build mm. great apps. And there are, in, in Sweden, there are people building fantastic apps, but they're not making any money. I mm. saw one a very interesting comment in a Facebook group I'm, I'm in, and this guy said, it's Friday, and today I'm going to buy a bottle of beer, because that's how much we've earned on our app the last half year yeah. or something. And he has a nice app. Yeah. And he's so, earned so, yeah. one bottle of beer. Yeah. So you think it's it's easy for startups to see uh, Instagram, to yeah. see uh, Angry Birds, and so on, and think that you know that's apps it. that's yeah. that's really the Exa where, where where to be. Exactly, and I think also a lot of startups. I think that's one thing I'm proud of what we do. I think a lot of startups see Instagram and think it's a very simple app, but the quality of, of the delivery yeah. and the compression of yeah. the photo, everything is so worked out, and that's. The app that we have launching now, we when we we started working on that in, in the end of January, and we expected to launch it week ten, mm. and we're now in week twenty one, I think, or something. Uh, in law in week ten, we we were playing the game full, but yeah. we like we just have to continue optimizing mm. the code, you know, uh, working on the equations on how to make things and animations faster. So we spent ten weeks just optimizing code. Mm. Uh, and that's something that I think most people starting something, they don't really see that part. They just yeah. see the face, but they don't understand that in, in this case you, you pull things together and, and the snapping effect. I mean, if you don't spend another week on the code, yeah. it's going to look silly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think uh, people look at simple things and think, wow, you can make big money. With that said, some, some people can, of course. But I think it's quality, quality, quality. But it would be sad if we didn't get global presence in mm. these stores. I mean, mm. Tokaboka is a good example, and you have some other Swedish examples, but based on that, most Swedish examples are, are not mm. very nice there in terms of interface and also functionality. So, so how do you market uh, on a global market like you are, yeah. apart from being in the, you know, trying to get a high rank in the app store? Oh, it's, it's a big mix. Uh, we have not, uh, we have not uh, what do you say, uh, pulled the ship the gear fully yet. We know mm. exactly how to do it, so we know what the money is and we intend to spend about 20% of what we think the money is on this next app and then yeah. we have this app, the social network will spend 100% of the money what we think it is. But it's a mix of, of uh, you know, personal contacts with reviews. Yeah. Uh, we have for this app coming up, for the first time we're using traditional PR tools, mm -hmm. so we will send about two and a half thousand press releases to traditional yeah. journalists trying to get it into in-flight magazines for yeah. example, which yeah. we have not done before. Uh, we'll do pretty uh, 
in terms of what we can do, we can also do a bit of advanced keyword analysis mm -hmm. on how which keywords we're supposed to place. Uh, we and do you mean keywords on the open web or in the app store? In the app store, mm -hmm. closed for you to see. No yeah. one sees them, but we have understood how to, how to work these things out in one way. Uh, we have we'll spend some time on understanding how to name our products. Mm. For example, for the build the sticker books, one of the things we did there was the first was called build the rescue sticker book. The next was called build the history, but yeah. not sticker book, and it's not selling as much. So just by including yeah. that word, it's like traditional search in yeah. some sense, but we didn't but we didn't think that would make such a big difference. Uh, we are um, manually talking to a lot of people, trying to get them to review our stuff. Mm. We have pu pulled in things in the app, so they, when you've played it for a couple of times, we wanted to review it. Yeah. That has given results, uh, as if we have understood it right. For example, when our first app was launched, and it's a sticky book app, and it had sticky book in the name, if you searched in the app store for a sticky book, you didn't find it. Mm -hmm. until a couple of reviews had rated it and then uh -huh. it, so they, it's we're still trying to find out those you things. can soon write the ultimate book yeah, on exa the exactly <laughs> yeah keyword and, <laughs> exactly and all those things see you in, yeah. in the app store and then of course there's a, a what you would call um, black hat ceo yeah uh, there's similar strategies not in terms of keywords and those things but there's of course there's of course a lot of strategies on how to get your uh, app visible on review sites. There's a lot mm. of review sites that only review your site for money. Uh -huh. uh, so that's something, but still some of them are mm. good, so you want them to be there. Uh, there's also the fact that you, mm, how to pick those sites in terms of, you know, if you want to launch an Instagram competitor, well, the first thing would be, of course, to Google Instagram blog post and then check out all those posts and yeah. then understand that's where you want to be. There's also a lot of good uh, closed uh, there's a couple of ad networks, uh, you know, like Trade or something yeah. like that, but that are, that are exclusive for brands that sell apps that they uh, curate. So, so you can only get in there if they have good quality. Mm. And we have managed to get in there. We haven't used them yet, but we have contacted them and they think our apps are good enough mm. to be in there, which will then get you into uh, many of the blogs you love, for example. Yeah, so, yeah. so, you know, the blogs that really matter that you cannot. So, which means you cannot put a banner ad on the blog, like for example Swiss Miss. Yeah. You cannot put a banner ad there if you're not in the right network. And mm. in order to be there, you have to be in a specific quality. And we, yeah. in that sense, we are there. Takaboka, for example, has used that. Then there are uh, RSS feeds of specific persons around the world that's, mm. that we know will penetrate the right people. And you buy yourself into those. Ob obvious as sponsor, but that's areas. Uh, we p for this one, for the first time, we'll, we have next Thursday, we have a photo shoot in a huge studio in Stockholm where we'll have uh, 14 kids in four or five years old mm. playing around and we'll do a screenshot video. More to see what that leads to mm. rather than that's the one. That's yeah. our first trial and error for that one and then that pulls the direction. And then, um, uh, funny enough, traditional bartering, bartering yeah. has turned out pretty good. And, uh, I don't know how much we'll do that. We don't have the money to do traditional advertising. Most digital people, that, you know, we're in this networking meeting today with digital people, and most would say, ah, traditional advertising is dead. But I did a speech for Finans Tining, yeah. which is a financial so like, organization yeah. in, in Sweden. And then they s we bought it, so they said we couldn't pay as much, but they could give us one full page. And that day we topped the list in Sweden. You know, so traditional advertising still yeah. works because we have to remember that a lot of the people that has kids are, I mean, this is still a phone that requires some money to buy and yeah. so on. And the same guy that has this would be some of my friends that are, that are 40, 45 years old, not very digital. They work in a financial industry, perhaps. Yeah. And they read these traditions, they're like, oh, a good app for my kid. Yeah. So that works, but uh, we don't have the money to do that. But I would say doing all these things, uh, and then, of course, using the contacts we have on Apple, trying to get our stuff out there, uh, and then doing this within 48 hours of the launch mm. uh, to make sure you're up on the lists. So, yeah. you get so that, that is the key, that's basically, that, 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 that I would say that that's the key to do that. Uh, but they will also have this immaturity of the App Store. For example, for, for one of our apps, when Apple contacted and said, we want assets for, you know, to put it in the App Store, and we said, like, fine, uh, how do we send it? They're like, just send it in the mail. I'm like, but it's 48 megabits. 
They're like, okay, then you misunderstand the specs, they said. I'm like, no, but we have 18 languages translated. Yeah. They're like, oh, okay. They didn't have a process for that. Huh. Because almost no apps has 18 logos. I mean, our yeah. logo looks different in China. Yeah. Most app has, if you take Instagram, it's still called Instagram in China. Yeah. But we call Build a Rescue Book something else in mm. China. Mm. So they didn't have the process. And that's just an example of how mm. immature the market is. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Which is sad because mm. China would probably be interesting to put up a sticker book app for kids in Chinese in yeah. China, but yeah. we can't send it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great, great, great uh, wrap up actually. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.